Tuesday morning, over there is a cracking day. Over there, not so good. And that is where we want to go cutting wheat. Go. Yeah, could have kept to the track. Changing them poles, it's going to be a right mess, isn't it, when they've finished? Willis is here, tanker. Jim Bob from Willis is, according to his nameplate on the front. That is a beast of uni mod. It's like a long wheelbase. A high ab on it. Got a broken knife and finger section on the end here. So, I'm just going to undo them two bolts. Slide the knife out and then we can change them easier because it's this one here. Cut a thousand acres and it's just showing it needs to tension the belts. That arrow should be here. So it's dead easy. You press that button. So, pull that out and slide that in. Spin that a few turns. A little bit about that. Pull it back. There we go. Maybe another two turns. Another day of swapping the dryer from wheat to rape or barley to whatever. Never done it so much, ever, but it's because it's so wet, everything's coming in wet, even even all the oil seed at the moment. Absolute bedlam. Trucks everywhere, tractors and trailers everywhere. Just want to get out combining. Can't even get out of the yard. Should have brought our wellies to put the header on. See how this performs anyway. How wet it is. bit more uh, water to go through here lift up so we don't get it on the conveyor belts because they do suck it in pretty quick what a drain in there it used to be a lot bigger but it does drain away but the sheer volume it's had in the last few weeks it can't cope plenty of dust coming off it it's actually reading 13.8 percent i don't think it's quite that low but we'll see when we get it back to the yard we've got a full tank Andrew's just appearing in the dust. Some work, can you see him? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let's took his block off. What's he spinning on? Strand the straw. Two of the straw. Yeah, he's took the block off. That'll do. Just in time. You don't take the block off the front of the trailer, you see it be grabbing on the straw now. Bunching up. Got to go around this pond now, so we do be getting some out before we get to it. Another quiz time, name that tune. Anyway, a big cutting around these ponds, it's a pain when you're spraying. You have to sort of loop them. On the combine, you kind of got to loop them and go up and down between them. You know, I'm going to cut through here now and hopefully we've all clear then until the last oak tree right over there. Chris was passing on his edge cutter and a spot in him. I was like, who's a favour? Take some branches off the bottom of that tree so we can see to get out the field. Because when you look to the right coming out the field gateway, all you see is the lower branches of the tree and it's hard to see cars coming down the hill. I don't know whether I'm going to regret putting this straw down because the trailers do, are making some wheel marks. Not much left on this field to go at. Um, Guy spoke to me actually, he's coming Friday I think, with a drone and I wish he'd have rung me last week because he could have sewn OSR on this field for me with a drone a week ago so it'll be coming up by now uh, anyway he's going to come and do a demonstration obviously the wheat will have been harvested but it would have been nice to uh, sow the field with oil seed then come on chop the straw and then away it goes it established well before the combine but we'll see how we get on on friday it's going in nice anyway this is this champion busher weight's not as good as the others i don't think it's been the year for it um, it was drilled quite early but we'll give it another chance next year anyway. Lift just off now with another load. 
Uh, really, she should be on the tram line and the, that empty one shouldn't, but this is what's happening. The trailers are sinking. It's uh, so wet. We didn't come out cutting yesterday, I know it would have gone through the combine because we didn't want to make this mess. Anyway, we're probably making slightly less mess today. The combine's not travelling too bad. It's uh, sunk a little bit here because I've just stopped from the top there up. But when you go up here, where it's just travelling over the ground once, it's not so bad at all really, it's just cutting into the, to the track cleats. Someone was telling me the other day that the combine got stuck, just parked up, emptied into a trailer. When they went to set off, it just wouldn't move. That air valve makes a funny noise when it blows up, doesn't it? It's reading 14.3 and I think it's probably a little bit higher than that. I mean, you probably need to adjust that actually. Morgan's on his way now. We're gonna put a load on the side of the trailer for treating for seed. Just thought I'd show you this. Um, this is obviously a tram line that we've not driven through since its last fungicide, but can you see it's still, it's still got wheat growing in it and there's nowhere for the pigeons to land. I'm convinced that's why we've not had any pigeon trouble in any wheat this year. I know they've shot a load of them, but I think they just can't land in there. They can't sort of like get the wings open. So definitely will not be tramlining again. That's the future, if you ask me. Which ironically is the past. So the reason you drilled tramlines was so you didn't get green rains, but it doesn't matter when you're wide, but also so you knew where to drive with the sprayer. Well, the sprayer now drives itself with GPS, so there's actually no point in putting them in the drill. I made up, someone has updated the version of uh, this classic. You might have took the block off, put the lid half the down. the bailer cough <laughs> bit of click bait there textbook load they're leaving you see the dust sky on the window look at that feet up for a moment while I wait for the trailers to catch up so I've just edited what you've just watched don't know whether you can remember but last year this field the track's a lot higher and there's a big hump and we've got the header trailer stuck coming out of it so we just brought some soil and re-engineered it so that we can go in and out easier still a little bit steep that side probably could do with another couple of load but hopefully we'll get the header trailer across now without it grounding on the tarmac Was, uh, sort of reclaim this that corner. So you can't see for the glare of the sun, but it seems to be coming across okay. No crunchy noises. Yeah, that's all right. Could that sun actually be in a worse place? It's about to see on the camera started the last field of the day now shouldn't take too long hour and a half maybe hopefully they'll have finished bailing as well over there you can't see from here can you it's doing all right this one to be fair for Evelyn it's not so bad sun's going down on Rob there he's not got much left to get to that oak tree so hopefully he'll get it done I've just nearly finished the headland on this and I've probably got about another 45 minutes to an hour and then I'm done as well. I'm glad I'm chopping this field. Can you see the water here? Hopefully the tracks will float over it and we'll go powering through. Header seems to be leveling itself out, sunk a little bit, but no, we are through. Anyway, here's, uh, here's the next trailer just arriving. Oh no, he's gone down. The Right, thinking he can go through that yard and he can't. No, I'll have to ring him. Right, I'm going. 
actually hadn't gone wrong, it was just a reflection um, on the trailer, making it look like it was on the side of the hedge. But, randomly, 13.9%, it isn't, I need to calibrate that rig, naturally in the one underneath, but yeah, it must be a 15% now, which isn't bad for 20 past nine at night. Anyway, well, I'm just gonna top him stationary because there's so many wet holes on this field. The tractor's traveling better than the trailers, even though it is on the 936. Not a bad sunset, actually, tonight. I am gonna call a video to it at the end. Liv's done the birthday bumper. Here it is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, quite busy on the yard today and Ollie's just out combining again tonight so I'm doing the birthday bump for him. Um, we've only got five names on it tonight so quite a quick one. Um, we've got Luke Cunningham, Tom Smart who's 34, Jim Sundback, Daffid Forks and Mark and Alison McClintock have their 25th wedding anniversary. The total is 42,000 413 pounds so thank you everyone for donating and happy birthday i might do a live later on actually if we're still going late anyway see you later bye